Hi, YouTubers. I'm back again. I want to talk a little bit more about the conscious mind, like we were talking about last week. And I studied what I talked about last week. I, I really, really did well in practicing. And I came up with the theory, for me, I, this is the way I, my mind kind of works. Because I, I practiced with the conscious mind and getting the conscious mind to obey commands from the, my subconscious mind. And I guess the subconscious mind, if it is... Um, a mind that wants to do what's right. You know, people have kind of, I don't I want to say evil, but they have different intentions. And they command the conscious mind to do um, evil things. I don't want to say evil, bad things. And I don't know, I haven't learned where that comes from. But... I, all this week, I've been trying to, my subconscious mind has been trying to tell the conscious mind, remind the conscious mind to get up at a certain time, do your meditation, drink plenty of water, take a walk, just little simple things like that, and, and even dealing with people in public, uh, traffic, uh, people that you have to deal with in the doctor's office or at the store where it could be misunderstandings and you know you could be curt with people or they could be curt with you and things could escalate but all this week I've been conscious of the conscious mind and it seems to have all made me more aware of who's Pulling the strings. Because the conscious mind has to follow commands of the subconscious mind. I think that's the way it went. I mean, that's the way I got it. But it's, it's a process of learning this. And the part that I'm going to read today, it may take us to a different level. But I remember... That was a time when I really practiced this study and I was able to go into the subconscious mind and oh, I don't want to say out of body experiences, but I was able to go into a different zone. If that might, might cause I was with um, this group of people who did this kind of stuff and we would uh, travel, and, and, and it was a dream club, and it was the weirdest thing. They would, this man who was over, these, we never met each other, but it was a group on, what an email, I forget, you know, back in that, a long time ago, MySpace or something. But they would say where everybody was going to meet up in the dream world. And they would tell you how to relax your mind. And you could tell your your mind what you wanted to dream about. And I, I actually was able to go and meet a few of these people. And the next day, we, we would describe who was who and what they looked like. And this one man that I could see clearly, he could see me clearly. And he knew that I was a black woman and I knew that he was a white man with a lot of tattoos and an earring and we started kind of going back and forth with the other but I sensed that his in intentions just wasn't right so I got away from the group so when you go astral travel and all of that you have to remember that the same people that you meet in this plane, in this dimension, and you go to another dimension, they take their their 
personalities or whatever, they are there. The same thing. So you have to be careful on every dimension that you go through. But this is kind of scratching my mind, you know, getting, making me remember what that was. And I I don't know. At, I ain't going to say at my age. But I don't want to meet a lot of people on a, on the astral, astral plane. I don't want to. And if I can just control the the conscious mind but then again before i knew about this uh, I, I was at traveling doing this when i was young i mean in the second grade i was doing this flying and seeing just people in the project i could actually do this and see what was going on in their house so I guess if you don't know what you're doing, you can do it. But when you get conscious that you're actually doing it, you get afraid. It's kind of like uh, in the story about how Peter was walking the water. He was fine as long as he didn't look down. And when he realized he was walking the water, that's when he got afraid. But I'm going to read a little more because this is it's a subject that I have to, I don't know, do gingerly because I don't want nobody to get the wrong impression and, and try some of these things because like I say in the astral plane this, there are some evil people there and you can go to a place and you won't be able to return or when you return you in your mind you don't I ain't gonna say you're gonna go crazy but you just have to be careful but, okay, I'm just, I'm going to read this. I don't want nobody to be afraid either. Okay, then I'm going to read where we left off last week. By controlling the conscious mind, you can cause it to work in harmony with the subconscious mind. With precision and balance, you can learn to consciously leave your physical body and project your astral body to another geological geographical location more importantly you will learn to protect project your intention to the inner levels and dimensions of the mind that's what i'm talking about you can do this you can project your thoughts and receive the thoughts of another over vast physical distances you may become more and more aware of others' needs and desires. Yes, I mean, you can do this. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, it says... Okay, let me read that again. You may be you may become more aware of others' needs and desires because you have greater self-awareness and compassion. You may be able to use clairvoyance, which is perceiving happenings that are too far away in time and space to be received through the in through the sense of sight. Let me read this again. You may become more aware of others' needs and desires because you have greater self-awareness and compassion. Okay, this is reminding me of something that I I used to could do. I don't I don't know why I could do this, but uh, for instance, that was the time one night I used to always want to paint and I'll just do stuff. I had to stay busy, so this one night I was on a ladder redoing my ceiling in the house. You know, uh, putting these little what you call them little bubbles or something on the wall, but you had to splatter it, do it with your hand years ago. But I was on the ladder doing this, and then all of a sudden, oh, I got so burdened and sick, I started crying on the ladder, just boohooing. And I say, oh, God, what is wrong? And this voice that I tell you I always have heard since I was a kid, the voice says, just pray that his dying is easy. 
And I said, oh, my God, who's dying? It was just, a, oh, I was so sad. I, I didn't know who it was, but I wanted to know who it was. And then I finally decided, okay, let me pray. And I prayed a short prayer that his dying would be easier. I did all this on the ladder. I didn't come down off the ladder. But then when I came down, I just, the burden, I just forgot all about it. And I went in the bathroom and was looking in the mirror. I said, well, what's wrong with my eyes? What's going on? And then I remembered that I was burdened and was crying on the ladder. But the next day, I went and got, got the newspaper and I was reading the newspaper and there was a picture of a man, and he was uh, in a wedding holding his wife's arm. And I said, oh, I've seen this man before. And sure enough, he was a man that I had seen on television about two months prior. And they were saying that he was getting married, even though he had a heart condition and may not live. And I thought that was just, I don't know, I, that in my mind, I said, oh, that is a love story. They're going to marry even though he's about to die. And I, I continued to read the article. And do you know the newspaper said that this man died at 8 o'clock uh, the previous night. And that was the time I was on the ladder. And the man died, and they and the news, I don't know, the newspaper users don't do this, but they say he died a peaceful death. So somehow my spirit received whatever was going on with him, and it may, my spirit may have touched, we may have touched each other when he, when I saw them on the news getting married. And I, you know, I said, oh, what a beautiful thing. So we were able to touch on that level, and when his pa in his passing, I was burdened. And when I read that, I said, "Wow, that was the reason why I was burdened about his death on the ladder." And the spirit just said, "Just pray that his dying is easy." And then the next day, I read this in the paper. But let me get back to what I was talking about. But that's what it's talking to me. That's what it's talking about. More importantly, you will learn to project your attention to the inner levels and the missions of the mind. You can protect, project your thoughts and receive the thoughts of another over vast physical distance. You may become more aware of others' needs and desires because you have greater self-awareness and compassion. I read that. That's what I was talking about. You may be able to use clairvoyance, which is perceiving happiness that are too far away in time and space to perceive the sense of light. You may be able to move objects from loca one location to another without the use of the physical body. No, I can't do that. <laughs> these instructions can be found in these lessons, really. Hmm. As you pursue these abilities, recognize that it is even more important that you reach for awareness of the superconscious mind. So, I guess the superconscious mind is the one that's controlling this. It says, in the superconscious mind, your high self expands with cosmic consciousness to encompass the world, all other individuals, the universe, and to touch your creator. In your superconscious mind resides your plan for being a creator, a whole functioning self, an enlightened being full of light. The closer you approach realization of the superconscious self, the more direct and purposeful your thoughts and actions become. Hmm. Each thought, each action, each effort is aligned with the goal of knowing the real self, becoming enlightened, aiding others in growth, and learning the lessons of life and the physical at an accelerated rate. You can quicken your own evolution. What might have taken 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, 
or a lifetime to learn can now be gained in years or even months. This is because you are learning how to learn. <laughs> you are learning how to learn. You are learning the process of quickening your soul's growth and mental evolution through the practice and application of certain specific mental techniques and tools. Wow, okay. So this is this is I'm mean, we gonna end on that note, but I'm gonna try to come every Friday with what I've practiced over the the previous week. Because like I say, this is a le learning thing for me. Because, you know, when you do things a long time, like it's what, 20 years ago I was doing this in the 80s. So yeah, wow, more than 20 years, huh? <laughs> I was doing this and just really, I don't know. And what, what made me stop? I got busy with life, you know, had to be hands on with stuff, putting out fires and raising kids and and then when you get them out of the house and get them in college you, you, you that's not the end because when they don't answer their phones they got the parties and the drinking and it's a, it's a another worry because you know they say you know they'll be on your lap when they little and then they be on your heart when they grown and you can't take grown people and put them on your lap you gotta let them go so i was busy doing that, getting the kids out of the way, and, and my uh, spiritual travel and my spiritual growth was kind of put on, on hold. My conscious mind, oh, hold on a minute. Okay, sorry about that, but um, my, um, I was talking about my conscious mind was busy just living, and I neglected all of that and now that I'm in a place I live alone and and I mean I have friends and things but and we kind of talk about this spiritual level but it's just so e it's a lot easier for me to stimulate my growth my mental growth when I don't have to worry about other people you know when you're an empath and you just, we don't know how not to wear an empath. Just, it's like, I don't know. And people, with my sons and my, my ex-husband and my friend now tells me, why do you do that? Why do you wear it? And why do you watch the news? And in my mind, I watch the news just to be, to touch people. And empaths are... Um, healers and we just seek and and to anybody that needs healing so when i even when i hear an ambulance going down the street i, I can't help it i i just say ooh, ooh, father of spirit uh, take care of them i mean i just i'm like that i can see a dog uh or a cat and i'll just and at a distance i'll say ooh, i hope they got something to eat or this and that you know so you just can't help it. And it's somebody, I mean, it's a lot of people who are empaths in the world. And they are programmed to be like that. And to t touch the creator of the universe and call out the powers that be to protect people. And I don't know, just the way you are. But me being this way, I want people, my subscribers, to come and go with me on this journey and even if we do uh, get on the plane in a different dimension I would I wouldn't mind being on a on a astral journey with with some of my subscribers because I don't I don't think you would have ill intentions or anything but anyway that's something in the future because we have got to learn the basis of this thing with the mind. But anyway, that's enough. I'm coming up on almost 20 minutes, and that's enough, okay? I'll, I'll see you guys next week, okay? Bye.